Welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to continue our um, tutorial on equipment stats. And if you watched the last video, 29.1, uh, which you'll want to watch before this video, or this video probably won't make a lot of sense, uh, we got stuck at a problem. Um, it's kind of a tough problem, and so we're going to have to look at some uh, look at some networking and how we can get around it. I'm going to go through various uh, solutions um, that may not be the best solution until we get to the best solution. So let me, uh, let me show you what the problem was that we ended up with last time. So we have this gameplay ability called Equip Item. <clears throat> and we're calling it from our third person character with abilities right here. That's for testing only. So <clears throat> we press the comma and key and then we basically call this try activate ability by class and we're calling equip item and then we use the period key to call unequip item. <clears throat> but the problem is this try activate ability does not let you send in any parameters. So we can't sit here and say, because this is, this is on the owning client here, right? They're, these are inputs. So inputs are on owning client. And so at some point here, what this comma pressing would get replaced by is by the owning client picking an item. Well, the server doesn't know what item they picked. And we obviously don't want to have to build uh, a different equipment item ability for every single item in the game. And so what we did temporarily is, see, we've hard-coded it here to Great Helm. But there's no way to get a value. There's no way to get a value to, to input. So we're going to start out with a method that's bad. <clears throat> and I'm going to show, because I want to show you why it's bad. So one of the things that we could um, do is we could, we could create a variable. called item to equip and I believe we just needed a string here a, row, a name, f name, okay that's fine so we need a name value and uh, <clears throat> which would be a terrible choice because of replication uh, I'm gonna change that to a string Okay, <clears throat> so we've got this item to equip here. So what we could do is we could go here and we could create a custom event. And we could call it server uh, set item to equip. And we change this to run and server reliable. And we add a parameter of type string called item to equip. And then we'll set that item here. Um, but but that'll just be up here somewhere. And we'll call server set item to equip. And now as you can see, <clears throat> we could put in here um, great helm. Okay, so now it calls this. It gets it up to the server. This is run on the server. Do what I always do here. Server uh, or off. Just to make sure. This is just to remind us that that runs on the server. And then inside the ability... Uh, what's it mad about? Okay, I think this is just you have to hit compile and save. What happens is that when you create this um, node, it caches it without the parameter when you first create it, and until you hit compile and save, um, it'll show up right, but it actually won't work. I, I consider that an error in the system. I, I don't know why it hasn't been fixed. It's always been that way. So I just gotta, every time you change the parameters on one of these, you gotta compile and save before you drag, <clears throat> before you add this. Um, okay, 
So it sends Great Helm up to here. This sets the item to equip. And now we're in Triactivate Ability by class, which is also running, um, I guess, actually, to do this the right way, we'd also want to do this. This is still the wrong way, but to do this the right way wrong, the wrong way right, I guess it's the wrong way right, uh, we would want to set this locally as well. And now remember what's going to happen here <clears throat> is that this triactivate ability runs twice. It runs once on the uninclined and once on the server. So then we could come here, we could say get avatar actor from actor info. We could cast to third person character with abilities. I'm not going to leave this code like this, so I'm just doing this temporarily. And we could get item to equip. And I've seen people do it this way. And it'll probably work. Probably. However, it won't work 100% of the time. And here's the problem. <clears throat> you can't guarantee the order that these happen. So meaning even though you run this first, because it becomes an asynchronous request over the network, it's very possible that you'll set this item to equip here on the server, and by the time you set this, it's already read the value over here. And so you end up with a timing condition. So this is, this is a bad way to do it. Um, it may work locally. You may never run into an issue until you go and start playing it on the Internet um, with real players. So this is a bad method. Um, don't do this. Um, so we have to think about, well, okay, how else can we do this then? How else can we do this? And so... <clears throat> One of the things um, that I do, let me pull this over, when I'm trying to do networking, is I create the swim lanes. <clears throat> because you need to know how to, set up, how to set up your RPC calls and how to get the data to everywhere you want. So these are the three spaces in UE4. You've got the owning client, right? This is the player. You've got the server. And then you've got all the other proxies. Let's say it's Fortnite. This is 99 more proxy clients. So your own client's you. The server has everybody. And every proxy client also has a copy of your character, all other 99. And so we have to figure out how to get it to the right place. So we've got this item to equip. <clears throat> and it's on the owning client. The server doesn't know and the proxy clients don't know. And we need to figure out how to get that over to the server. So if we look here, to get data from owning client server, use a run at server RPC. Well, we did that. We did that. We did a run at server RPC to get the data over to here. Okay. That's, that's good. We, we did that. Um, but what, what that looks like here is that looks like an arrow drawn from owning client to server to get this item to equip over here. So there's an arrow drawn between these two. But then right after this, we activated the ability and it activates the ability here and activates the ability here and it's possible this item to equip is in front of the activated ability or behind the activated ability so that that's not going to work so we need to somehow know on the server when this is set so now we're going to do the next method that's also wrong it's better it's better, but it's still wrong. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, well, what if I could wait on the owning client until I know for sure that the item to equip has the right value? And you can. You can do that. So basically, this is going to look like an arrow that goes to here, comes back to here, and then goes back to here. OK? And you can do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to item to equip, and we're going to set it to replicated. But we actually want to know when the value changes back on the owning client. And so we're going to set it to rep notify. So now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to wait on this. Some more room here. OK. And so now we, we go here. We jump over here. And we set this with a notify. 
and you'll see that we've got a callback. Okay? So on this callback, what we want to do is <clears throat> uh, we're going to create a custom event here. Uh, we'll call it, um, let's see. Activate uh, equip item. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll come into this this on rep item to equip, which it created this function for me automatically just by setting item to equip to rep on rep notify or rep notify. And so what we'll do here is we'll now call. Um, Let's see what, it, what did I call that. Too many open here. Uh, activate equip item. Activate equip item. Okay. Um, but we got another problem. What's going to happen now is that because this on rep item to equip, it's going to get fired. So I'm going to go put on rep item to equip. So now what's happening <clears throat> is that item to equip is being sent to the server. The value is being changed here and sent back to the client. And then on rep item to equip is being called and it's calling a and then we're calling activate ability. The problem is, is that on rep item to equip is also getting uh, run on all the proxy clients. So then they're trying to activate the ability, which actually won't break anything because uh, they have a check in them that says not to, but we're not going to even try. We're not going to waste CPU cycles. So uh, I think what we want to do here <clears throat> is inside our on rep, we want to say is locally controlled. And that basically will tell us that we're the owning client. They're the owning Okay, <clears throat> so what it's doing now is that this is now not, it's still running this, but it's not, it's not active. So activate ability was also being run over here. And, and now it's not because we're saying, no, 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 only if it's locally controlled. So this method, this method works. Um, this method uh, works 100% of the time because you're waiting for the value to change on the server to activate the ability. So then when the ability comes over here and is activated, you're guaranteed that this item to equip was set in advance. There's no, there's no chance that the item to equip wasn't set because it waited to run this until it did one round trip. So this method um, works, and we can try it but it's still not the best method. Um, okay, let's go wire up the rest of it. Oh, we did. Okay, item to equip. Um, let me go back to our items. Equipment. So we created this data table last time. Light Helm was the other one. I'm going to switch it to that. Um, and I guess now we don't have to set that there because it's getting replicated back. And so we'll put uh, light helm. And I believe that was supposed to make our decks go up by two. So let's give it a try. Make sure run dedicated servers on. Is it going to be nighttime or not? Eh, it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> trying to remember what character we use. C. There we go. C is our character. Oh, C is our input for bringing up the uh, character thing. And so now I'm going to press comma and see, it worked. So this method 
works. It works 100% of the time because it waits. It doesn't run into a race condition that the other one runs into where the one might beat the other and you have no way of guaranteeing the order in which they happen because it waits. <clears throat> this is still not ideal though. And let me tell you why this is not ideal. So let's come back here. So we have to ask the question of why were we activating the ability in the first place? What did the ability do for us? Ah, oh, it changed the stats. So we have to actually show here that after the ability is activated on the server here and after it's activated on the owning client, what's updated is attributes, okay? And those attributes are then automatically replicated to our proxy client <clears throat> and they're actually also replicated back to the owning client, okay? Even though they're already set, they're already set here and then they're set again back to the same thing <clears throat> because it does prediction. Uh, but what's happening here is that we're setting the item to equip and we're going all the way back to the owning client and then all the way back to the server. What if we could cut out the middleman and not have to replicate back to here and instead what we would do is just go from the owning client to the server and activate the ability on the server, in which case it would update the attributes and go back to the owning client and the proxy client. See, that would be one less RPC, and then we would we would uh, be able to save save some network bandwidth. So let's take a look at that, how we could do that. So this method does work, um, it's just not the best method. So if we come back over to our, um, Come back over to our ability. And actually, we are going to leave this. I said before we weren't, but I was wrong. I'm just going to change it a little. Pull this down and make it look a little bit nicer. OK. Um, so if we come back here and we go to class defaults, you'll see that there's a net execution policy. And we've been using local predicted. Local predicted is when we run on the owning client, we change some values there, and then we RPC it up to the server and change some values there. But in this case, we want to change this to server only because we're going to execute it on the server. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and... Um, Item to equip no longer needs to be replicated. Um, so we're actually going to switch it to none. We're going to come here and dump this on rep item to equip. We don't need it anymore. And we don't need this activate equip item. And we're going to grab this and pull it down here. And then we'll talk about what's uh, talk about what's happening here. So now what we've done is we've RPC'd our va our light helm value that we want to equip, and and this could just get hooked into whatever UI is picking, um, and we'll actually do that a little bit later. We'll hook that into a UI, and um, it's sending it up to the server with a run at a run on server reliable. And then it's setting this item to equip. This is on the server. So if it sets it on the server, it has to already be set uh, by the time it gets to the try activate ability by class. And so what we're going to do, we come here, use that print string. Uh, right here. Send that into there. Okay, so we can see that when we run it. And so we're setting this item to equip, and then we're activating the ability. Um, but the now this ability is um, now this ability is a server only, right? So now it's not local predicted, <clears throat> and we're pulling out this value, 
and we're setting it. And over here, it finally applies an effect. And the effect modifies the attributes, but the attributes are going to change on the server. They're going to change on the server, and then they'll be replicated to the owning client and the proxy clients. OK, so we should still see that plus 2 uh, for the dexterity, and we'll watch the log. OK, so 10.10, 10. we're hitting comma. And there we go. And what I wanted to show down in the log here is that when we did local predicted, remember, it did it on the client and it did it on the server. And you'll see now that it's only doing it on the server. That's what I wanted to show you uh, with that run at server. So it actually, in this case, is only activating the ability once on the server. It's not activating it on the owning client and then RPCing it up and then running it on the server like it did for the local predicted. So we basically have saved a round trip. And we're getting the same result. And this is the best method. This is the way to do it. Um, OK, I said we'd set up a uh, test UI. So we're going to do that real quick here. This is what I do in our game, since we don't have a full UI yet. So we're going to come, let's see, where did we put that? To our character sheet. And um, we'll just. Just add some more horizontal boxes. Okay, and let's see. We need a drop down. Drop down <clears throat> um, helm or head slot, and we'll do drop down chest slot, and we'll go here in the head slot, and we've got our items. I'm gonna hard code these right now for testing. Great uh, helm. Um, later we'll switch them to to pull from the uh, data table and let's make that fill make this fill and uh, let's drop some text in here so we know which one's which Sometimes this is really hard to get these things to go where you want them to. I want it there. Yeah. Okay. And so we'll do head and uh, drop another text item. There, uh, I guess that arrow, I noticed there was an up-down arrow there, decides where it goes. Just Okay, <clears throat> so then what we need to do is we need to come to this one and on change event, uh, on selection changed, we're going to get our owning player pawn means it only runs on the client which is good pass to third person character with abilities and what we're going to do is where we had this comma we don't need that anymore we have a custom event equip item Item to equip. Yeah. 
And over here. Yeah, we're gonna have to come back to this. This this unequip item still needs the uh, treatment we're doing here. We'll come back to that. Um, okay, so we've got now we've got the equip item there, and we come over here and equip item, and we can take the selected item and pass it into there. Okay. So now when we do the selection, it should change. Uh, the only issue here is that it does not refresh the stats. Let's find where that was being done. I think it's in the player controller. So I think down here when we open it, Input graph. When we toggle the character sheet, um, you'll see here that it has these refresh stats. Um, it helps to put those in a function so we can reuse them. Refresh character sheet. And we need all of this. I'm hit, I hit Control X. And what did we were missing here? Character sheet widget, we needed a reference to that. And so then what we can do is here we can call refresh character sheet. Makes this a little bit cleaner too. And now when we come over into the character sheet, we can do get owning. This is the crazy one. Get owning player is actually the player controller. Should have said controller. Uh, cast to person player controller. And then we're going to call refresh character sheet. Okay, so that should make sure that after we equip the item, it changes. I think it will change without opening and closing. I think that uh, UMG is. I think they're, they're real-time bindings. We'll give it a try. So we're gonna watch that log to see what happens. Okay. So it put it on. Oh, wait, hold on. Is that item to equip? Item to equip Great Helm. But it doesn't seem to be running the game playability. To equip. Uh, maybe that's actually it. Let me just double check. Uh, was that right here? I didn't do equip. It was. Okay, so it is running this. Um, so the problem is we're just not getting. Uh, Refresh character sheet. Um, let's see if I, what did I miss? Uh, the risen character with abilities. Character sheet widget. So we know it's calling. You know it's calling this equip item because it's printing this on the server. So that's good. So that means this equip item got to here, got to here, and called this. 
And then in the character, so we know that obviously it hit um, this. Just double check here that uh, print string. It's a good idea to uh, have these cast failed. Sometimes they will help you. Problem now is it's just not not updating the stats. Very interesting. Not sure it's being called. Character sheet. Why at minus two? Hmm. Interesting. That client minus two is kind of funny. Okay, let me check something here. So one of the things that's really annoying. I don't know if it's the issue here. Sometimes you can't do certain things in a function, but I don't, I don't know that that's what's going on here, but just to be sure. These are the kind of things that I would normally have figured out ahead of time, but uh, again, today we're doing it, doing it real time. I have not, uh, not ever done any of this, so not ever done any. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's go here and I'll call the refresh character. See, that makes a difference. It shouldn't. But I have run into issues before. Okay. At least we know that it's not related to that. Okay, well. Let's go back to how we had it. Make sure that's still working. No, the other, okay, cool. Try to troubleshoot here. What's exactly going on? Okay, apparently it's something other than that. Yeah, okay, so it's something else is going on. Because um, now we've put it back the way that it was, right? That's where the, all of this was. Uh, well, I guess the only difference...
is that uh, this was connected. If they're both the same name, so I, I don't think that's going to be a difference. They're both the same thing. Unless there was an error where we were using that. Let me just double check. Okay, I'm starting to believe now that the values are not actually changing. Something else is going on. And it all happened when we did this. Okay. That's And just to completely put it back the way it was, that also go there. Okay, now we should be able to be able to figure out exactly what's going on here. <clears throat> okay, we change it to Great Helm. Nothing. We hit the comma key. Nothing. Well, this is interesting. Inadvertently. Oh, well, no, it's sending the right value there. Let's go back here just to be sure. Light. Ah, ah, I got it. I got it. Remember the other day when I talked about the fact that these things have to not have a space? As I was putting this together, I thought about that, and I totally uh, missed it. So the problem here is that um, the, the values aren't matching. This one's expecting it to ha not have the space in the name, and the drop down in our character sheet uh, in the designer has spaces in the name, right? Because these things don't let you have separate values. So it'd be nice if they did, if they had a display value and a behind the scenes value, but they don't. So what I said we would do is we would come in here and we would just say, um, oh, actually it's gonna be, oh, replace. Uh, is it replace in line? I think so. That actually doesn't. We actually don't need to replace it in line. It actually doesn't matter. Replace is fine. So we need to basically say from a space to no space. And now we can come back and we can clean up all the other stuff we've been doing over here in the player controller. Um, we'll leave the refresh here. That was refresh character sheet. We're dumping this refresh. We're dumping all of this. Move this over. Oh, actually, we still need to call refresh character sheet. So the problem was that space in the name. And we'll come back here. I do hate that it doesn't show you there's a space there. Yep. And then we'll come back here. And it was refresh. Character sheet. Okay. Now. Now I think we're finally going to be there. Nice little detour. It's always something simple. I was hoping it'd refresh instantly. Now you'll see. Yep. I was hoping they'd refresh instantly. Anyway, it's just for testing. Um, not a big deal. So that lets us pick our uh, helm item, and let's uh, let's do our chest because we don't have. Uh, we don't have that working yet, so let's go do the chest item so we can have one of each.
show how it works for multiple. So you'll remember that we created in our tags that we created um, equipment slot chest. Now we're going to come in here and we're going to add let's see um, let's call it iron breast plate and we'll have it give us five strength iron breast plate and this one's going to go under oh, under our chest slot and we need to have another one, so let's add another one here. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, what can we call this? Do, 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 do. We'll just call it cloth shirt. And this one it gives us two dex, two dexterity, let's say. Yeah, let's do three dexterity. And this is also in the chest slot. Okay, so now we come look over here. Every, we'll get rid of this. Don't need that anymore. So it's going to pull those names for the chest automatically. So that's good. And all that's taken care of. There's no issues there. Uh, this is a quip item. It doesn't care what slot it is as long as you send in the right name. It means that you couldn't share names between a chest slot and the other. If you needed to do that, you'd actually have to send in two values here, which is here's the slot I'm equipping it and here's the other. But um, I don't think it's a big deal to make sure that these names here are unique. I, I don't think that's a big deal. If it is for your game, you can send in two values. Um, okay, we've got to come back over to this, and we need to add our values here. Iron rest plate, and it's going to remove, oops, nope, not in selected. Rest plate, and cloth shirt, spaces will get replaced. <coughs> And we need to add a on selection changed. Oh, this is actually all exactly the same. Everything's the same here. So let's create a function set equip or uh, change. And this one's going to have a string input to equip. Come back over uh, to event graph. Grab all of that. Paste it here. And we'll take that item to equip and put it there. And now we can just reuse this. Each equipment. And that makes it a lot cleaner. OK. And so now we should be able to do those. Now, there is another problem here. Okay, this one's actually good, because it'll remove the one. I was worried they were going to get duplicated, but I forgot that we added this remove effect, and it's going to be based on the one that's pulled into it. So this is all good. Um, the only one that's not good is the removal. Okay. So let's give it a try. Okay, so we should be able to add the Great Helm which gives us the plus three there, and then we should be able to have the shirt, which gives us the three there. Or we can do uh, the light helm, which gives us the two decks, plus the iron breastplate that gives us the five. Wow, that one actually updated, but it was backwards. Hmm. 
that's interesting. So let's see. So we're at 15 and 12, which is right. We change it to Great Helm. Huh. Should be 18, 10. It's interesting that sometimes it's updating and sometimes it's not. Ah, it's it must be based on. Yeah, it must be based on timing. Anyway, it's not a big deal. It's doing it right. It just uh, the display is being funny. Now we go for the big 18 strength, and there we go. So now we've got uh, now we've got more strength, and now we have a way that while we're testing the game, we can go in and uh, and and test these items. Now I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you guys an assignment because we're not gonna we're not gonna do it here, um, but I'm gonna give you an assignment. So the assignment is that we hard coded these values in the designer. Okay hard-coded those. And so now what I want you to do is I want you to go up uh, probably in this refresh character sheet and I want you to load the values in this head one and in this chest one. Instead of default options here, I want you to load them from the equipment list so that when you add one more here, they automatically go into it. So there's your, there's your assignment. Um, so uh, each time you'll want to empty it and then reload it based on whatever's in this one. And you can use the equipment slot as a way to figure out which one of these to load. Uh, so that should be that should be a good assignment for you guys. Um, the other problem that we have is with this one. Um, Actually, let me see here. Yeah, I mean, this, this unequip is actually messed up because if you remember in this unequip, um, no, it was up here. Uh, the problem was I think we hard-coded it to the helm. We did, equipment head slot. So what we'd have to do here is the same thing we did on the other, is that we'd have to come over to here We'd have to do um, slot to unequip, and I think that was a gameplay tag. And then we would want to change the unequip to run at server. And we want to come over into the equip. And grab this, and then um, slot to unequip. Uh, make gameplay tag container from tag. That'll convert the one to many. And then we need to do the same thing with the RPC call. So we need a little more room. We create a custom event. Server set slot to unequip. And we send in slot to unequip. And we'll change that to gameplay tag. Play tag. And then we have to set this. Neither of those need to be replicated. And now we call server set slot to unequip and now we've got a way to get from this local one of whatever we want to oh, no nope, I don't want that but basically we're picking one locally so whichever one we need to send in Chester head I thought we were gonna have to call this um, from our when we changed our equipment I thought we were gonna have to call it 
Uh, we would only need to call it if we wanted to actually equip it to nothing. Uh, then we have to do that. But now that's a way that we're able to get that information up to the server the same way and basically use the same same system for unequip. So there you go. Um, oh, the one other thing I said that I would mention. People have said, hey, how would I make this visible to everyone? So let's go back to here. So with this item to equip, the other thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that we change. Um, we have to make sure that we change the value. Um, or sorry, that we change the model. Right, so people want to use a modular character. We don't have one, but basically what you would do is that over here where we have mesh, if you have a modular character, you actually have one mesh per slot. So you'd have um, head mesh, chest mesh, arms mesh, etc. And so what you would do is that you would go back to making this item to equip replicated with rep notify. Okay, and then in this on rep item to equip, um, this is where set um, slot mesh is what we would call it. So I don't have one to do it, but this is where if you had a modular character, you would use this item to equip that just came back. So this, this code's running on the owning client and the proxies. And uh, so it would make sure everybody sees it when you change it. And what you would do is you would use this value here with this item. Um, over here, we would have another column added to this that said what mesh, what mesh. So that each one of those would point to the, the mesh piece that we want to change out. And then all we would do is do another lookup here from the data table like we do everywhere else, grab that value, and then use it to set the mesh. So like if we pull this out, you can do uh, set skeletal mesh. See that? So then this would be the skeletal mesh for that uh, slot. And that piece would be referenced right here with a skeletal mesh um, reference. And you would basically just take this value, get the row out of the table that matched that, and then you would um, plug it in here. I'll just leave that here. But that's basically what you would do. I don't have a modular mesh to work with where I'd show you how to do it. But um, for those that do, or the artist types that can create their own uh, in Blender or Maya, uh, there you go. That's how you would do it. Um, okay. Uh, that's it for today. Until next time, see ya.